makes provision for me in the sanctuary. Then shall the sun 
of men appear the son of man appear even so
Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, people of God, and welcome once again to Journey of Faith, the flagship interview program of the North Jamaica Conference Online Church. We are happy to have you and to welcome you once more. If you're joining us from Guyana, Alexis, Adoas, welcome. If you're joining us from Barbados, Bahamas, the Turks, Trinidad and Tobago, or elsewhere in the Caribbean, welcome. If you're joining us from somewhere in North America, perhaps uh, Georgia, New York, Florida, maybe you're joining us from one of those locations from which the campaign will be broadcast or you'll be able to join that location in Sunrise, Florida. That's in the Lauderdale area where that campaign begins this coming Sunday. Wherever you're joining us from in South America, perhaps Iraq, somewhere in Europe, we're happy to have you. And whatever may be your religious persuasion, this is the place for you to be on NJC Online Church. So again, happy to have you. Uh, if you're coming to us from East Jamaica Conference, West Jamaica Conference, Northeast Jamaica Conference, Central Jamaica Conference, North Jamaica Conference, anywhere in Jamaica, we welcome you to NJC Online Church. This evening, we have a very, very, very special guest. We have one of the leading lay evangelists in, in Jamaica land we love, right here on set at NJC Online Church. Some of you will be surprised. Some of you may be in Ten City or somewhere there in the, in the Old Arbor or Portmore region or maybe in somewhere in St. And you know him and elsewhere in Jamaica, you know him. Who is it? You'll hear more when we come back. We're going to take this song service. Enjoy this worship. Be blessed. And then we'll return with our special guest. Before all of that, though, let's assume an attitude of prayer as we invite God's special presence in our midst. Let's pray. Our Father, take our lives in charge this evening. Thank you for the blessings of this Sabbath day. Thank you, Lord, for the amazing love demonstrated on Calvary's cross for our sins. We now commit all the viewers, all the listeners, all the hearers into your hands. As we go into the interview, let your Holy Spirit bring the messages, the points of testimony to hearts to deliver souls. Touch all hearts and bless the song service now. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Well, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you so much for that song service, uh, people of God. Certainly, I know your hearts are blessed. All, the hearts of all of us here are certainly blessed. I told you we have a special guest. If you have not yet done so, rush right now, send the link, contact your persons, call your neighbors and your relatives, get in touch with your, with your friends, call your spouse and your children, get everybody ready because we have a special guest in store for you. We have with us this evening a man of God, an elder, one who has served as first elder for many years in, in God's church. He is an evangelist, a man who loves the word, who loves to preach, loves to throw the life into perishing souls. I speak of none other than evangelist, Elder Livingston Burgess. Elder Burgess. Happy Sabbath, Pastor. Happy Sabbath indeed. Happy Sabbath. How did you escape, manage to escape for so long, journey of faith? Where were you hiding? I don't think it's a matter of hiding. I think that we serve an on-time God. <laughs> and all things work together for good to them that love He's God. He's always on time. And our cause. So he's on time. Yes. And you know, even when, when he was four days late. Still on time. Lazarus case, he was, it was on perfectly time. on time. Still on time. Welcome, sir. It is a pleasure. Uh, you have been serving as evangelist here in Jamaica. Multiple places. You have preached in Trelawney. You have preached in St. Anne. I know you have preached uh, in, in St. Catherine. You have preached in St. August Town. Um, viewers, I'm going to let him tell you the areas as we come more to that. But Ella, before I get into all of that, let's, let's start with your early beginnings. Um, where is Ella Burgess from? Where were you born? What's your parish? I, again, good evening to the viewers, wherever you might be watching from, whatsoever continent, country, parish or county. I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. We, I was born in deep rural St. Catherine, on the border of St. Catherine and St. Mary, a uh, district called Dunkel near to John Crow Spring. Don't look for it on the map. It's not there, but oh. I know. But I, it's not on the map, but it is there, for I was there a few <laughs> weeks ago. And so I was, I'm the second child for William Burgess. No, the first child for William Burgess. Mm -hmm. That's my father. And the second child for me is Cowan Burgess, who is my mother. Okay. Uh, I have seven brothers and sisters. Uh, growing up, as I usually tell people, John Crow Spring, that's the catchy name. Growing up in John Crow Spring, I was born in a very poor family. I grew up very poor. Uh, I don't know what it is to go to my bed hungry though because oh. they, were hard, they were always something to eat mm -hmm. uh, but grew up very poor I know what it is to go to church uh, barefooted until age 12 I know what it is to go to school barefooted and all of that and so I grew up in a humble beginning attend the early years Pear Tree Grove College then I finish at Rosal Alley School, where I pass my common entrance. That time it uh, it was a regular common entrance. I pass and all of these uh, all of these communities now. These these schools and these experiences are in John Crow Spring. John Crow Spring. Okay. Right. And uh, pass my technical exam in 1976. Attended Dintil technical for four years where I graduated in 1980. Uh, I said before humble beginnings my parents didn't have silver and gold but mm -hmm. they gave me things that money couldn't buy things that make me into who I am today things that I, that I was able to a legacy that I was able to pass on to my children. Okay. And so I grew up uh, attending Bagby Seventh-day Adventist Church. Bagby? Bagby. Okay. Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath, Bagby. Right. <laughs> I grew up attending Bagby Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Catherine. I was baptized at about age 10. Right. That's in the Adventist Church? In the Adventist Church okay. at, at, at Bagby. 
Uh, there was a crusade there, a pastor, and Pastor Brown, I remember, uh, was doing a crusade. There, we didn't have which electricity. Which Brown are we talking about? I, um, I, I don't remember his... Okay. I, I just remember that as a, as a little a boy. Okay. It was a Brown. You, you see, every time I meant to ask our union president if he was ever pastor at Bagby. Oh. Uh, but because picturing the pastor, no, it is, was the same built like, like Everett Brown. Okay. Right. So I got baptized about age 9 to 10, so somewhere mm -hmm. there. Didn't really know much. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know much. Uh, the two things that I know is that you go to church, you, you go to church on Sabbath, you don't go to shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that they don't eat pork. So those, <laughs> those were the <laughs> those two things. things. Too right, those were, were the two things that I knew. When I, when I got baptized, and when I got baptized, one other thing that stood out is that when I was asked, when I was in the pool, mm -hmm. and I was asked by the pastor, what you want to become when you grow? I remember I told him specifically a pastor. I, oh, the pastor I, asked him that while you were right, in the pool. And I told him I want to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so I got baptized there. I, but when I passed my common entrance exam and attended Dintel mm -hmm. in the first year, everything was fine because I had to travel from my parents' from house to school. Okay. So I was under control. Under guidance. Under, right. Under, mm -hmm. But in my second year in 1977, when my mother packed my dulcimina, and those of you out there might ask, what's a dulcimina? It's a whole time grip. Packed <laughs> my grip and took me to the campus of Dintel Technical. Then things changed for the worst. Oh, as so far as my Dintel, Dintel had a boarding facility a boarding, on campus. Yes, yes. Okay. And things took a, a change for the worse as far as my spiritual life was concerned. Mm -hmm. You see, growing up in John Crow Spring, I didn't have electricity. Mm -hmm. The brightest light when night come was Peniwali. Okay. And we used the good old sweet home sweet home, home sweet lamp home. The... and the buckle torch. And the other one that so when I you're going elsewhere at night, you have the bottle torch. With I you. have the bottle torch when we're going mm -hmm. far, and if I'm going up to the kitchen. And of course, you know, you if when you're telling our Europeans and um, our brethren who are from from Toronto and Montreal about bottle torch, you perhaps would have to expand on what is a bottle torch. All right, the the three form of lights that we have, we. At the lamp that we use in the house, in the house. Uh, that, that was fueled by kerosene. kerosene oil, and that one had a shade on it and give perfect light. The, there was another one we call the tilly lamp. Uh, in Jamaica, they call it kitchen something. I won't mention it on the mm. program, but uh, we, uh, we the, 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 the correct name was tilly lamp. It was one that was made out of tin. And it had a wick, it was, and the oil in it. And you use that one when you are going to the kitchen. Okay. But somebody from Europe or North America might be saying going to the kitchen. Where I grew up, we, didn't, we weren't privileged to have the kitchen and the house. Attached to the house. The kitchen was removed. The kitchen was the separate, house. right. Mm -hmm. And so if you are going to the kitchen, you use a tilila. Was the kitchen the only separate um, part no, of no, the house? No, no, I'm coming I'm not, to that. Okay, good. You know in North America where you are coming from, or even here, younger people, you, you are now used to when you are going to the bathroom, uh, mm -hmm. that you just push a door and you go in mm -hmm. and you sit comfortably and you flick mm -hmm. a switch mm -hmm. and you press up tap when it's done everything and is the washed away. Will be right there in your bedroom. I, we used to have what is called a latrine. The latrine is something that you, you, you have to build that about two chains from the house. Mm -hmm. And when that time comes at night, that is where you have to go. Uh, and so when you are going to the latrine, you use the buckle torch. Mm -hmm. Use the, the, the buckle torch. And somebody online is going to ask, 
that what about when night and you want to urinate, do you have to go to the latrine? No. We used to have something they always call chimney. Mm -hmm. Right, and that is under the bed. All the provisions were you, made for Right, for, you have for to enter that like every morning. So that's the primitiveness of my boyhood days. And, um, and again, bottle torch, that would have been a bottle. That was a bottle, and you put the kerosene in, and you get some newspaper, piece, right. and, you, and you cock it tight and push mm -hmm. it down, and then now you tilt the <laughs> bottle, and, to, to and wet the and newspaper wet, with, and the, with, the, with the weak with, with the fuel, fuel which was kerosene and mm -hmm. then light that and every time that it is going hold you know shake it turn it down and shake it again and and and, and 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 you're gone so those are but now the, you're at dintel and you have flick you have um, electricity all right going to dintel now 1976 i was now exposed to the bright lights of linstead yeah, just a flicker switch and everything. I remember, Pastor, I remember, and I will show this in, that the first time I went to a place named Riversdale with mm -hmm. my father, that was the nearest that electricity came to John Crow Spring. And I remember the first time I saw street light. Mm -hmm. I saw street light. I was there, the, the, the bus came late for, in those days you didn't have taxi. It was one bus go, that goes down in the morning and the same bus come up, and if that bus leave you, you have to walk. Right. And I remember the first night <clears throat> that I experienced street light. I hung on to my father, and I said, Papa, 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 oh, so much moon upon sticker rivers there. <laughs> you know? And, 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 and my father said, shut your mouth, boy. It's street light, that. <laughs> right, that's the first time I was actually seeing street light. So in 1976, when I passed my exam, and I must also share this with you, and I just want people to know that whatsoever I'm sharing, I'm sharing it that it can encourage somebody. Amen. I'm, I'm sharing it that somebody can know that it's not where you actually come from, but it's where you're actually going. And there's mm -hmm. nothing shameful about where you're coming from. They ask the question, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? But I heard Solomon say, Jesus is a lily of, of the valley. Amen. And so I'm sharing this to really encourage somebody. I grew up poor pastor. I had to go to school many days before I get to Dintil. There's a journey to Dintil. Uh, before I go to, when I go to school many days, I, my mother didn't have lunch money to give me, mm -hmm. to give us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we oftentimes go to school without lunch money. What my mother would do is that my mother would prepare lunch. Most time it was turn, turned cornmeal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she turned the cornmeal with pumpkin, turn it with peas, seasoned turned cornmeal, sometimes nice, turn nice it with talk. sugar. Right. And she would walk about school back then at Rosehill was about four miles from where I live. And you have to mm -hmm. walk three and a half miles every morning and every evening. My mother would walk off of that journey meet us with the turn corn meal at a place named rock rock is a place where the water was running out of the rock and running across the road okay. and the water was cool and people would have to stop there to get water to drink and my mother would go at rock when we reach here my mother would be sitting on a stone and have the plat the dish in a plaid towel mm -hmm. and we go to the rock <coughs> and wash our hands and we dry it off in our khaki and we, and we hold out our hands and my mother would share the turn caramel and put it in your hand and you eat the turn caramel and you use the same and catch some water and drink and you say, me gone mama and you're gone to school barefoot on the rough road it was a asphalt road, barefoot and that's how we actually grew up but at home we always have food because when we were roasting breadfruit when breadfruit season mm -hmm. It was, we built something outside called a halter. And every man get a breadfruit according to your size. Oh. Right. So, so if it's 10 of us at home, my mother usually put like 14 breadfruit on, 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 on the halter. If my mother is cooking, she cook. I, 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 I'm seeing the look on your face, Pastor. I'm going to, <laughs> uh, when my mother is cooking, it's a big part. 
big part. Mm. Uh, because you did say seven, seven boys and girls in total? Yes, seven boys and, and So you would have made seven. Six plus you are seven plus No, me. seven plus me. So eight in total? Eight, right. Okay. Uh, so ten members in that, in that household? Right. Uh, right, including my mother and father. Uh, so when my mother cooked pasta, the entire district can come and eat, and mine is not shocked. Okay, okay. And I grew up, my wife who is who will be watching online will tell you that I grew up with the same okay. temperament. That when I'm cooking, I cook a whole lot. That's mm. how I was brought up. So it will be 10 of us, but you'll find 14 or 15 breadfruit and fire. Because if John Tom pass, my mother is offering them food. Yes. Mary Jane pass, she's offering them food. And ours won't, won't be shocked. And so every one of us would get a breadfruit according to our size. So, but before you move on from the breadfruit part, when you say each one would get a breadfruit, an entire breadfruit? An entire for, breadfruit, that's pasta. That's for the day huh? for you to cut and put on a piece of you No, pasta. That's meal. no pasta. That's your dinner, pasta. That's your dinner. And <laughs> every bread, man get a breadfruit. Entire, okay. Every and man get a breadfruit. Based on your size, so the, the, the biggest children, siblings, would get yeah. the biggest breadfruit. Yes, pasta. But if it's a roasting breadfruit, it would have to be fair size. That's a good, huh? good amount of dinner you have there. Yes, Pastor. And we were and we eat that. And we didn't we couldn't buy chicken back. Chicken back pasta. Mm. Chicken back was a Sunday staple. Okay. Chicken back was a Sunday staple. That, that's a special, special That's a special and special Sunday. Meal. Right. And during the week we eat what is called rundown. Some mm. people call it tapia pass. Mm. It's where you cook the coconut. Uh, you mm. boil the coconut and we put shad in it. We didn't need mackerel because we were oh. Seventh-day Adventists. We put shad for a shad mm. of scale. And we put some on natto. Right? Okay. You have a thing they call a natto. And when you dip the breadfruit in that, you, when you are eating the breadfruit, you don't use fork. You use you, a finger. You use a finger and you dip, dip the breadfruit in that. Yeah. Yes. Right. Mm. And sometimes... When you get the pot, the pot that it is cooking, and you wipe out the custard, yeah. And so that is how we actually grew up, grew up so poor. So poor, you're saying, poor, but not hungry. Not hungry. Your parents I, made sure you were all fine. Right. Your food. I remember an embarrassing thing happened once in a pastor. The, I remember we went to school, and somebody troubled us we didn't have any lunch money or anything mm -hmm. and and some children were mocking us mm -hmm. uh, and i came home and told my mother and my mother went up to the road when they were passing and my mother when we ate in the morning mm -hmm. right in the morning it was like lime leaf tea and bush tea mm -hmm. right uh, iron weed and all of that and we drink that, as you call it, black tea, and we eat the breadfruit sometime. And again, way, again, Allah, for those who are watching who don't understand, these, these are local tea. Local tea leaves picked, herbs. picked from various herbs Re around herbs. that right, are readily right, available. Right, right. Used to make tea. Yes. And we didn't have time to eat of everything in the morning. And so, as I tell you, each child will get a breadfruit. Mm -hmm. And so, plates were covered up there with the breadfruit that was left over. And my mother got what we call a pudding pan. That's a big dish. And she knocked out everything in it. Mm -hmm. And you never dare ask her what she was doing. We, you couldn't ask that. Mm -hmm. And she went up to the road and she sat down. And she waited until they were coming. And she stopped the crowd. Holy heap of children. Mm -hmm. And she said, look, I understand that you trouble my boy at school. That he's hungry and whatsoever. But he's not hungry. And she took up the, <laughs> the pudding pan with the heat and the bread and said, see it? This is what they left here this morning. Mm -hmm. They can't be hungry. And I was embarrassed because I didn't want anybody to know that. No, it's bad food to eat him. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But, but that was my mother. That was my mother. God bless her. That was my mother. And, and let's, let's put it on the table early. Was your, were your parents, mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to ask about your mother, but your parents, both of them, were they members of the church from before you became a member? No, 
no, no, no. And, and, and that part of my journey long. I was going to mention that my father, my father mm -hmm. was a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. Because he came from a Seventh-day Adventist background. Okay. All his brothers and sisters, all my uncles by my, mm -hmm. and aunts by my father's side, Uncle Chico, Mas Vernal, Aunt Christine, all of them were Seventh-day Adventists. Adventists. All their children mm -hmm. up to today are Seventh-day okay. Adventists. We grew up, they grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist. My mother wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. But what I can tell you, you could not know that she's not a Seventh-day Adventist the way that she runs the house. Oh. Every Friday, every Friday, you, every Friday evening, you have to be, well, you call it Vespers, or we call it worship. Be at worship early. You have to be at worship. And it's the whole hymnal. And I remember my, the, there are certain songs which have to be sung mm -hmm. on a Friday night. Holy day, Jehovah's, Jehovah's rest. rest. Don't forget the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And save, save the two another, another week. week. Those yes, three man. songs must be sung or else worship cannot end. And your mother is in that singing. My mother is in that singing. Because what, what, what happened? My mother was an excellent singer. Okay. And so she used to sing at church harvest and church concerts. Okay. And when she sing there, at, at a guy about the Seventh-day Adventist church, mm -hmm. when she sang there, they would pay to put her up back. Okay. She, she was that she was good. was an excellent... But she wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. Right? But we have to go to church. My mother, I grew up, Pastor, I grew up, I didn't grow up on veggie mince and veggie steak and fried chicken on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I grew up every Friday by... Three, four o'clock, my mother finished baking. Okay. And it's what we call in, in Jamaica the Ella Tap, Ella Bata, Hallelujah, and Middle. Uh -huh. That's where you bake on a wood fire and you put the fire on top of the pot and a little underneath. And every Friday, Pastor, my mother would bake the wet top cornmeal pudding mm -hmm. and toto with, mm -hmm. with the coconut trash in it. Or sometimes she made the dukuno, the same one they call the blue drawers. Or she make all type of things on a Friday evening to keep mm. us for the Sabbath. And when it comes to Friday evening, make sure that every one of us is present. I remember there was a shop nearby. And in those days, you have a man uh, with what we'll call a Roomba box, you know, a box that you play. Uh, and you have another man with a whole greater very primitive form of music mm -hmm. but it sounds good and i remember my brother my brother the one that follows me he decided to skip worship mm -hmm. and to go out to mass berry's place to listen mass johnny and the other men play on the rumba box and when my mother came in freshen up and came in and look around he and he wasn't there <laughs> and he wasn't there and my mother, you say, I'm, I'm going to say it like how she said. I'm not pretty enough. She didn't say, where is Mikey? She said, where is Mikey then? And everybody looking around. And there was a strap that she had. Mm -hmm. That you call, she called it put to right. Mm -hmm. It was a piece of leather. In those days, you could get real cow skin leather. And the strap, and she cut it with a handle. Right? Leather about this long. And... When she take out that, you know, you know it's a serious business. And she reach, <laughs> and she take up that, and she fold it up. And she put on an uh, appropriate dress, and she turn up the road. Mm -hmm. And the place and she was, turn up the road. And the place was dead silent. She turned up the road with the strap, with the strap in, her possession. In, in her hand. And it, the place was dead silent. For everybody was listening. And when she went out there, the music became silent. Mm -hmm. they saw and her the coming. only sound you could hear was the sound of the strap and the sound of my brother bawling. <laughs> and he can't run. He has to walk. And take everything. And take every lick you could hear them whap, whap. And she beat him come right mm. in the living room where we were having worship. And she he, was that serious. And he never did that again. No, 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 no. She was that serious. <laughs> she was that serious. And Sabbath mornings, 
you Where was your father at that time? My father was around, but I will be honest. Uh, he, my mother was the... The leader in that phase. The leader. In that phase right. of the... Right. My father was of, very quiet. The home. Okay. Right. My mother was the one who do all the scolding and everything. And after she would have scolded Michael mm -hmm. like that on Friday night, what happens on Sabbath when the children and, the, and, the hus and the, her husband are gone to church? What happens with her? What happened to... Yeah, what was her religious persuasion? Not Adventist, but was she at church go otherwise? No, she, 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 she never church? attended an, an, another okay. church. She kept the Sabbath at home. Okay, okay. She kept the Sabbath okay. at home. Ah, uh, we have to go to church early on Sabbath morning. Church starts at 9.15 mm -hmm. and it's about a 20 minute walk and right. you have to leave on time. Okay. And when she fixed you up in those days, uh, it was, it, we didn't have fancy hair like you know. Mm -hmm. It was a good old coconut, coconut oil. oil. And when she rubbed that in your hair and draw her hand over your face and rub your shank them with a the sharp pants, it shine. <laughs> and you have to go to, to church and it was bare feet you were going, going, mm -hmm. going to church and you come home back and it was a pudding you get with some, you call it lemonade now, those days mm -hmm. you call it sugar and water mm -hmm. with the lime on top and all of that and, and the bread, the hard old bread with the butter, right, that so, is what so, we had so to look. So when she, that mother now would have given you that solid guidance, all of you Yes. So all, were all the children baptized? Uh, apart from my sister, mm -hmm. apart from my sister that wasn't my father's child. Okay. When my sister passed, come and entrance, she was a bookworm. Okay. She read the Bible about 10 times, back to front. Mm -hmm. she, anything she gets, she just read. Okay. She passed her exam. She, she is now Dr. Long ago, Morrison. Mm -hmm. She was the principal of Samshar Teachers College. Okay. And the last year when she retired, she, when she passed her exam, she went to live with her father in Glengarf, okay. where she attended St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. And so she was not, trying to remember, no, she was not baptized. Okay. But okay. all the other brothers and sisters of us, we were baptized. All baptized in Bagby Baptized church. and regular church until you are now, we are back to your second year at Dinthil. So you have gone to Dinthil, everything was fine year one, you are traveling from home, under right. discipline and guidance. But before, it comes year two. But before I reach the Dinthil, I just want to tell about the goodness of God and to let somebody know that God had his hand on me. Mm -hmm. from I was a child. I just want somebody out there to know that sometimes you might feel worthless, but God doesn't create anybody worthless. Amen. Uh, there is a purpose. And no matter what you're going through, friend, there is a purpose that God has for your life. Because I remember, <clears throat> it was 39 of us that went to, that sat the technical school examination mm -hmm. we had to travel from John Crow Spring to an exam center at a place named Herewood which is about from St. Anne's Bay to Runaway Bay and my mother had five cents pastor, five cents mm -hmm. and that five cents was only enough to pay my bus fare to go down on the bus to the examination center. There was nothing to buy lunch. There was nothing to pay my fear to come to get back. back. All the other children were better off than I. Mm -hmm. They had money. They, because we weren't used to electricity. When exam finished, they had to wait on the same bus that took us down to take us up. That mm -hmm. bus passed back at 6 o'clock. Right. So between 2 o'clock when the exam finish and 6 o'clock when the bus comes back to Riversdale, they had a lot of time to, as we call it, gallivant. Mm -hmm. And so they would go to Riversdale and they would broke out, punch jute box, uh, everything, until the bus come. This little barefoot boy, 
didn't have money to buy homemade biscuit. There was a biscuit back then named homemade biscuit. Couldn't buy a snowball. I had to walk in the hot sun from Earwood back to John Crow Spring. Mm -hmm. Walk. Some of them walk on the train line. Some of them walk on the road. And I remember that was a bamboo. And I was knocking the Pauline on the train line. And when the exam results came out, we had back then a newspaper called Daily News. Mm -hmm. My father went to a chocolate board meeting and somebody had a Daily News that was two weeks old. And a man said to him, uh, they used to call him Uncle Sood. They said, Uncle Sood, your boy name in a paper, man. And father said, what are you talking about? And he showed him my name in the Daily News and gave it to him. And when my father came home and said, boy, you pass. I was wondering what my father was talking about. <laughs> because I didn't take in any word medicine. And it's only when you take word medicine, then say you pass. Mm -hmm. And he said, you pass exam, boy. And he showed me my name. I will not forget that pastor. Livingston they, they, they allowed Oliver. him to take the Daily News yes, newspaper right. home. Yeah. Livingston Oliver Burgess in the paper. In the newspaper. And the good thing that will let me shout hallelujah. Of the 39 mm -hmm. students that sat that exam, I was the only one that, that actually passed. I was the poorest. I was the only one that passed okay. ex that category of, of, of the, exam. The fact that you, you were the poorest... Mm -hmm. uh, five cents only to transport you to the exam. Yep. That would be maybe about 15 miles away um, or maybe more. About that. About 15 yeah. miles away. Transported there, no lunch money. You had to mm -hmm. your way back home compared to others who could have traveled to and fro. Yes, man. But you passed. What does that, what would you have to say to all of those young men out there who are at school they don't have the money. Their parents don't have it. But there's, the parents has some mother somewhere mm -hmm. is sacrificing, doing work that maybe she doesn't want to do, but sacrificing mm -hmm. to put this boy mm -hmm. forward or this girl forward. And while they are doing their, people are coming to them, those boys and girls, and saying, this life is too hard. Enter scamming. Come mm -hmm. on. And, and offering them something else. Um, what do you have to say in terms of being in that kind of poor and struggling environment and being able to succeed. That is why, Pastor, that is why each time I preach, I always tell people, don't let circumstances define who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't let circumstances make you make certain choice. And that's the reason why I don't like to hear people said, I am a thief because I was poor. Right. I am a prostitute because mm -hmm. I was poor. I do this because I was poor. Mm -hmm. No. Poverty, you make a choice. Of course. You make a choice. Mm -hmm. Don't let circumstances define the choices that you make. Amen. You have to stay focused. You have to know where you, where you want to go. You have to set your own goals. You have to decide your own priorities. Mm -hmm. And even when you can't see a way, keep pressing. Even when you don't know how it's going to work, keep pressing. And mm -hmm. more than all, while you're pressing, trust in God. Amen. Because when you don't see a way, God already work a way out. I didn't see a way, Pastor. But Pastor, let, 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 let me tell you. I'm coming to Dean tell you. That's why I tell you I have a long journey. <laughs> when I was growing up, Pastor, in the late 60s, high school wasn't on the agenda. To send me. Because back in those days, it's only the rich and famous, mm -hmm. tall year, pretty people that goes to mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. Right? But there, there came a change of political administration in 1972. Mm -hmm. And we have what is called free education. Right? Okay. And so, coming up in the 1960s, it was decided... It was a decided case already that when I leave school, they are going to send me to what you call learn a trade. Okay. 
to learn trade. So when you leave, you're talking about maybe all age. When you leave, leave all, all age school, school, it was the plan. Trade. That was for the me plan. to learn a trade. High school is not an High agenda. High school was not on the agenda. Okay. Because you'd have to be basically rich or right. some level of affluence to and be able pastor, to. Pastor, then if I couldn't find money to, to go, go to exam. the all age school, Oh, I was going to find money to go to, to, mm. to think. And, yes. and, and, and I should also tell, as I mentioned, my father, my both parents were sick. My father was sick. He died in 1976. Uh, my father was sick. My mother had a fall when I was a baby. That's why okay. I had to grow with my aunt. Oh. Uh, had a fall and she had nervous problems. Oh. Um, my mother will be in her sleep and you hear her shouting come out, come out see the man in the house, come out and you just mm. shake her everything mm. alright okay. she had serious nervous problems mm. um, my father spent about four months mm. in the Buff Bay Hospital my mother spent about six months in the Buff Bay mm. as Hospital so you see both of them were actually sick and so uh, the, what I want to say to somebody God have a purpose for your life and you just need to trust him. It's going to be rough at times and you can't see a way. But my God is a way maker. Amen. He's a way maker. And I want to tell somebody, God has already, my friend, you are watching. You are watching. God has already chart the path that you should follow. Mm -hmm. What you need to, to do is to trust him. He has a plan for each person. Right. And yes. Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways tonight, acknowledge him. And he shall, not the he may, he shall direct your path. Yes, he directed your path to Dintil Technical. So he directed my path to Dintil Technical. When, in the first year, as I tell you, things was right. You were uh, fine, you were traveling from Yeah, I was traveling, man. I but now you are on campus. No, I'm on the, campus. With the bright lights. Pastor, I still in a chair. You see, it's as if though I was waiting for this time to come. Mm -hmm. I want to bust out. Mm -hmm. That is why when I study Luke 16, I sympathize with the son that asks his father mm -hmm. for his inheritance. Mm -hmm. Right, because maybe I would have done the same thing. So, so when you're preaching, based on experience sometimes, experience leads us to, to understand matters of scripture in very various different contexts. That's right. To empathize with the people That's sometimes. Right. right. And that is why they said I preach long, because I preach from experience. Oh, uh, you, you preach long? <laughs> That's why they said that. But I'll come to that. But when I went to Dintil now, and my mother took me, and they put me in East House Dam. They, 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 they put me in one of the worst dormitory. Uh, when I say worst, it wasn't in terms of cleansiness. But all the guys in there were roughneck guys. Okay. Right. We're, 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 uh, there was no Christian down there. Mm -hmm. In, in East House dorm, Dormitory at, at Dintil, you have the man who hide and smoke in weed. You have the man who drink. You have the all sort of wrongs mm -hmm. it take mm -hmm. place there. That was like a garrison. People, mm -hmm. free of the people who is in Easter House dormitory. Mm -hmm. And that's a dormitory that they put me in. And I link with the wrong company. Okay. I link with the wrong company. I was very good at school, though. Everybody liked me. I was uh, living on campus. I was in charge of the dairy unit. I used to get 50 cents per fortnight as an incentive. 50 okay. cents, it was some paper for 50 cents. Uh, and I get in the wrong crowd, the wrong company mm -hmm. there. Uh, we used to sell battle. I used to sell battle on campus to survive, apart from the 50 cents. I used to sell battle. I used to be a battle police. It, and that was no big thing for everybody to pick up battle. Right. We, and we sell battle to the talk shop in the nights two cents for a bottle and that's how we buy our rock cake and orange okay. juice right and but instead but in addition to buying rock cake i started following some of the boys over to a place named capture land mm -hmm. uh, that was a uh, informal settlement <laughs> uh, that they put the name to it mm -hmm. now uh, 
And over there, they would go to look girls at night. Oh. They would go to buy... And they were allowed no, 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 to not, leave the campus? No, no, or no. Or they hid? No, you hid. What, what you do, what you do, you have dinner. And at 7 o'clock, between 7 and 9 is mm -hmm. what you call prep. Everybody have to get out. There wasn't an auditorium at Dintelet. It was okay. in the dining room. Okay. You have to be at prep. And a record, a register is marked. And okay. if you are not at prep, the damn master, who is always a teacher, is coming to look for you. And if you are not on campus, you are in serious trouble. Okay. And so after prep, 8.30, you now go to, you have half an hour to go to the talk shop. Mm -hmm. And the talk shop closed 9. Mm-hmm. 9.30 is lights out. All right. Light turn off in the dormitory. It was double decker bed, top and bottom. So what we usually do, we usually make, so after the dorm master pass through mm -hmm. and check the beds, check, yes. right, we make some images and put in the bed. Uh -huh. And you put a piece of black thing up the top and the pillow. Look like here. Right. And you cover that with a sheet. And it's a we. Burgess was involved in that. Yes, a wee. yes, yes. You used to do yeah, that. I Burgess. used to be in, in, involved mm -hmm. in that. And we would come out of that dormitory. We know where to walk that they don't see us. It's mm. shortcuts. And I would either go on to a dance. Remember, it's a seven-day Adventist they're talking about. Mm. I go on to a dance. I go on to a club. Or I follow the boys over to capture land to buy ganja. And I remember going with them and watch them buy. And they are for me. But I, growing up, I used to do my little smoking, but it's chocho leaf. Mm -hmm. So smoke the chocho leaf. And they offer me a draw, and I take a draw. I say, yeah, man. And a, another draw. Until then, say, well, you, you have to start buy, buy your own now. So instead of saving bottles to buy rock cake. And orange juice. And orange juice. I save the bottles to buy my little ganja split. Mm -hmm. And I used, I started smoking that. I started smoking cigarette there were some cigarettes called peter red and peter blue and these people in these communities mm -hmm. the capture land and so on were allowing the dental students to part they were yes, selling their new year yeah. students and they were selling yeah because in those days we we, we, we weren't small like your son <laughs> we, were, we were big boys yes, yes. right and, and so and you would leaving bagby adventist church mm -hmm. at john crow spring yeah. somewhere there mm -hmm. and having come to dental now you would have a big church in Linstead. Yes, Adventist and I've church. never been there. You didn't, so once... It's when, when I become big, a, a okay. big man and, and came back to the okay. church that I, that I visited Linstead Church. I've never been. Okay, to, while you I, were in, at Dintel. While I was at Dintel, I followed the bright lights of Linstead and it led me to the wrong places. Okay. So instead of going to church on a Sabbath, mm -hmm. all right, when I started out on campus, every weekend I used to go home. And then it starts every fortnight. Okay. Then every month. Then sometimes my mother don't see me until the end of a term. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I, instead of going to church on a Sabbath, I find myself at Caymanus Park. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to Sunday night meeting, I was at a club in Linstead named Club Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to church, I find myself going to anywhere the dances. Kingston Were anywhere. your parents aware no. of your drifting? You, no. you kept it quiet. Right. So no. whenever you would go back to, to Bagby at the end of the month or so, you were back to your Christian... Back to my Christian. So we are to Attending towards. church and so Right. On. So we are to what? Okay. Right. So I drifted past. I drifted far. That is why I love this song. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Mm -hmm. And the chorus said, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Yeah. It's a good point on which to take the break. Love lifted me. We need to know more about what God has wrought in the life of evangelist Livingston Burgess, who was there, baptized as a Christian, went off to school, started out wonderfully, fell into the wrong crowd, and was trained. But love lifted evangelist Livingston Burgess. More after this song when we return from the break. I 
I believe that the Lord's way was best. I would read in his word how he mothered the bird and grieve when it fell from its nest. How I felt its delights when I chose to do right. And I prayed I would not make him sad. We would meet all the way in the cool of the day. What a pure, sweet communion we had. Oh, but now more than ever I cherish the cross. More than ever I sit at His feet. Oh, the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true. And He is so precious to me. places of life Sometimes I've stumbled and fallen so hard that the storm cut my soul like a knife But the staff of my shepherd would reach out for me and lift me to cool passes green With oil of the Spirit anointing my wounds there I'd rest by the Oh, but now more than ever I cherish the cross More than ever I sit at His feet Oh, the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true And He is so precious to me Too good to be true Do you find all this hard to believe? Has the cruel world we live in So battered your heart That the hurt child inside you can't grieve Oh, I can't say I blame you I've been where you are And all I can say is it's true You're wanted, you're precious you're the love of his heart And the old rugged cross was for you Oh, but now more than ever I cherish the cross More than ever I sit at his feet All the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true And he is so precious to me More than ever I sit at His feet All the miles of my journey have proved my Lord true And He is so precious to me He is so precious to me He is so precious to me Thank you so much for that wonderful song and welcome to this phase, uh, the second half of Journey of Faith with none other than Evangelist Livingston Burgess, who was baptized at the age just about nine or ten, serving the Lord there at Bagby Adventist Church in the John Crow Spring, Spring region of the border of St. Mary and St. Catherine, went off to Dinthil after he passed the technical examination, the, the only one of 39 of them in the community who did it. He went off, the first year he was traveling to and fro from home, maintained his Christian principles, but then the second year onward, he was taken to the campus to board there, and he began to drift away. He drifted, followed bad company, began to, to emulate some of those things, and was drifting aimlessly away, but love lifted him. Ella Burgess. Love. Yes, Pastor. What is that love? Uh, traveling. Uh, I was living on campus, and I, 
I became so bad, I, you see, I became worse than those who I was following. Mm -hmm. That uh, they had to not expel me from school, but I couldn't stay on campus. Okay. And so I was given boarding uh, in the community of Linstead, a place named Bennett Lane. But so they put you on, a, on boarding under maybe strict regulations? No, no, no. no. <laughs> that, that even make it worse, Pastor. <laughs> Where they put me to live, and I must tell you this, my mother could not afford boarding. Mm -hmm. It was a welfare department of the school that paid the $50 okay. per month. Oh. It was fifty dollars per month for the boarding. Mm -hmm. and it was a welfare. I, I, outside of that, Pastor, I was a good boy. You know? but, but why would the welfare department of Dinthil have a student on campus in an enclosed, protected environment and put that student elsewhere unless that student was viewed as, as I was a threat to as Adam. a threat to the stability of the, the yes, Pastor. And I will take less than a minute to, to tell you what, what uh, caused them to do that. We have what is called, you call it caning, caning on campus, where you go around and flog people in their sleep. Mm. Uh, a young man, I was at the farm, and I tell a young man to milk a certain cow and he eats his teeth and walk away. And I say, mm. all right, I'm coming for you later. Oh. And I had a little gang. That oh, they you call, were leading of a group that would... That would right. right. I was uh, about five of us. And when we were flogging in the nights, we wore pure shots. Right. And uh, we call it the Willow Whip Gang. Mm -hmm. And we went the night to flog the young man. He was from Kilankali in St. Mary. That time I never know them place. So we call him Kilankali. A lot of times you are called based on where you come from. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we went to flag the young man, and the dam was dark, but we know his bed. Mm -hmm. We stake out the bed and know where his bed was. But that night, the young man put his head where his foot should be. Whoa. And when we were, and he was covered from head, head to, to foot. foot. And so when we were, were flagging. You were flagging his, his feet, you thought. Yeah, but it was his but face. But his head was there. And his chest. Mm -hmm. And the morning after I came from. We call it cow shed from milk in the cow. It was my responsibility. We had, uh, we had uh, many cows to, to milk and it was mm -hmm. hand, not, 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 not me mechanical. I uh, had to milk about 20 or 30 cows. Mm -hmm. uh, get them out to pass or come back, get ready for school. And when I finished and I went to the dining room, I have a porridge. For porridge was the main thing. I have a porridge and my purity bread. And I went to devotion. I understand the principal wanted to see me. And when I went upstairs, I saw the young man. And there were marks across his face and all over. And uh, it was something that should lead to expulsion. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I that was very well you. mannered to teachers. Okay. I, they know that I come from a good home and things like that. So I wasn't expelled you were to have been expelled but they just put you off campus but they give me the lesser punishment mm -hmm. that put me off campus and they pay for my stay out there yes right and so but that only make things worse for when i went to live in linster the people who i was boarding with they live at their new house and the house that they were coming from which was a two-room house which their son occupied one room and i occupied the other was about three chains from where they live. Okay. So when I finish my activities, though, they're having dinner and all of that, mm -hmm. I usually tell them I'm going up now, I'm going to study. Mm -hmm. But I just turn on the lamp inside here. It was, uh, I turn on the bulb, push up the door, and I go on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's worse than that than when yes. I was, and there's where I really not broke break out. out, I broke out. Right, as I said in, in Jamaica terms, I started now going to the dance. I started going to the go-go clubs. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I, if you're going to a go-go club and you, you weren't spending, then the bouncer, the gate man would put you out. Oh, and, and at this stage, you are 16, about that, 17. Uh, what age no, are you? I'm about, approximate. You're talking about 
14. Uh, yes, about 15, 16. 15, mm. 16. Yes, I left school at, right, so about 15, at 16. So at 14, 15, you were flagging other students? Yes, man. I, 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 I was rough at school, Pastor. I, I, I was rough. When I talked to a man, when I talked to a man, you, you have to move. You know, because I went to Dintel 1976 when there was a thing near Ragging. Mm. And the Ragging that I got, I gave it back in, in, in my other years. So when a man, when a new student see me coming, him, as they say in Jamaica terms, in take away yourself. Mm -hmm. For they used to call me Driggs. Driggs are come. Mm -hmm. So you take away yourself. Right. And for <laughs> when I talk, you, you, you have to do things. Like that. So that, I was actually rough, you know. I don't back down from anything as your quinta beat you up on a gun. But let's move on from Dintel a little bit. So you would have had a rough experience at Dintel. Right. Went off and so on. But when you came to graduation, how did that, how did your, your results uh, match your conduct on Dintel camp? Because you did say you were behaving, you were respectful to, so what was your schoolwork like? My schoolwork in certain years, Pastor, I must tell you, and all right. When I went to Dintel the first two years, you did everything, everything, mm -hmm. apart from electrical installation and welding. Okay. I did every, as it, it's a technical school, right. I did everything, mm -hmm. but I love agriculture. And what happened? Well, I love ag agriculture. Agriculture carried with it all the science subjects, and I love mm -hmm. science. I usually tell myself from early school that there are certain subjects that a female should not be better than me in. And when I was going to early school, it was like general science and maths. Okay. And so that's how I used to make a little money. For you have the pretty girls who couldn't do maths and in those days teacher used to beat. And they used to yeah, come so. to me to help them and... When they come to me, I have attitude. I say, look here, if I'm going to help you, you know, it uh, costs you a homemade so biscuit and okay. homemade biscuit and a snowball. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's how I used to make, 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 make some money. That's not extortion. That was our final service. Yes. Right. So, and so when I went to Dintel, I love the sciences. Mm -hmm. when, you, when, you do, when you do agriculture, science, it carries biology, it carries chemistry, it carries physics. It carries maths, it carries land, land, mm -hmm. land survey, and all of those. So, from, a, from second farm before I specialized in agriculture and third farm, there were certain subjects that I was brilliant in that I actually dropped. I was brilliant in English literature. But in second farm, I stopped going to literature class where I said okay. that doesn't have any bearing on what I'm going to do in third farm. I stopped going to Spanish class. I, in first form, I never get less than 80 in any Spanish test. Okay. But in second form, I drop it. I also drop English language, which I actually... So you are bright in a lot of them. I bright in my maths. Mm -hmm. Which one did in you my physics. actually com like hmm? complete and, and capture in the, in the externals? In the external exam, we did GC. That's what I'm in class. Right. And I got A in accounts. Okay. I got A in physics. I got a B for biology. Uh, I think I got a C for So you did chemistry. well. You did you work. It right. was considered you did very well in your yes, terms. I know my work, man. Oh, you did I very well. Work. So you graduated from Dintel. Yes, man. I, I graduated from Dintel. And I want to tell you, even when I graduated, all right. The graduation was November. Mm. Right? The Valedictory service mm -hmm. was the end of June. To attend my valedictory, well, the valedictory luncheon at school wasn't bad because I, could, I had on my uniform. Mm -hmm. But my valedictory church service, which was at the Linstead Baptist Church, it was, I made friends with, with big men. Mm -hmm. As a schoolboy, my friends were big men that work at Halkian. And I had a friend named Keith. They call him Takian. And the, my mother could only afford to get uh, pants. I remember I had a burger and a uh, garbadine pants. Okay. I didn't have a shirt. And it was my friend that lent me a shirt. 
to actually wear to my the, right, the right. For I just couldn't afford it. What I used to do at Dintel also is that I remember when my father died in 1977. I decided that I wasn't going home that 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 summer holiday. 77. But you went to Dintel what? 1976. 76. Right. So your father died early in your yes. experience. Yes. Okay. And when my father died. I decided I wasn't going home that summer, for it doesn't make sense. I'm going home to put more pressure on my mother. And I walked from Lindsay to Bagwak looking a holiday job. Okay. I walked from Lindsay to Yorton looking a holiday job. And then somebody told me to call a man at the Bybrook Condensary. That's where they make the condensed milk. Mm -hmm. And I called a gentleman, I don't remember his name now. And I have five cents, and I went to the call box, and I dial the number they gave me, and I call, and I get through to him. And the man invited me for an interview. And the long and the short is that from, I, I perform so creditably mm -hmm. that every holiday, I didn't have to call the condensary. They, they called call me. Back. They, they, they so called me. Okay. Let's move on from Dintel now. So Dintel was a success. Let's pick up from there. You have left Dintel... Uh, what's a church like? Like at this stage, you are still out of the church. No man, church is a no-no. It's, it's off. It's not anywhere. Church is off the radar. All right. So you left Dintel and you are going to work. I left Dintel and to show you how good God is in all of this, Pastor. God still had His hand on me. Mm -hmm. When left Dintel, before I left Dintel, Reynolds, Jamaica mine in Saint Anne. Mm -hmm. Sent to Dintel for some engineering students. Okay. The principal still loved me, although I was a bad boy. And they, he called me and, and he gave me one of the farms and I complete the farms. And uh, he sent out the farms to Reynolds. And by July, they called me to Reynolds for an interview. Okay. I didn't know where in Jamaica to find Reynolds. But the lady I was living with worked at the post office in Linston. Mm -hmm. And she knew that the mail van that comes to Linston goes to St. Anne. And she asked the man, and she, the man said, yeah, man, I passed Golden Grove. And so I traveled the mail van, and the mail van man tell me where to come off. And, and it was in St. Anne? In St. Anne. Is that was in how Golden you Grove. came to be linked to St. Anne? That's what leads so me to St. Anne. So you, got, so you got the job? I got the job. When I came for the job, the, the, the gentleman, a white gentleman that was interviewing me, he said, when he looked at my thing, he said, no, you're an agriculture student. I need an engineering student. And the man was about to turn me down, but God had his hand on me. Mm -hmm. And I said to the gentleman, I remember specifically, I said, Mr. Robinson, you cannot judge a book by the, by the cover. I've traveled from far. At least read the preface of the book. And the man said, if a man said we are very insistent, he used words like that, maybe not the exact word. And he gave me the test. And out of the 10 questions, I got nine and a half right. Right? Because what I was a brilliant student at physics. And so when it comes on to uh, the question and the and the four-stroke combustion engine. Yeah, man. The, I, the, engine, the engine and physics are close. I just they, mash up close. that. When, when it goes on to electrical... We won't be able to go into all of those because we don't want the time to run out. But right. you are at Reynolds now. Reynolds. And, and how long approximately did you... This, that's in center. Did you work at this location? I worked at Reynolds for 1980 to 1983. Oh, three years. When, when they had the first backside recession, oh. I was laid off. Last in, first mm -hmm. out. I was laid off from Reynolds mm -hmm. then. But, right. but you're, you had a footing now in St. Anne. Yes, I had a footing in St. Anne. And all of this time when you get this footing, you, you would have been close to many Adventist churches. Where, what, wasn't there anything pastor, that was reviving no, that interest? No, pastor. I was going further and further away. Okay. When I came pastor, you see, my journey long and rough. <laughs> when I left school, I believed that the way to prove to my peers that mm -hmm. I was now a man 
I believe I was a man, I, I used to work 350 350 dollars per month. After mm. tax, I get 270 dollars per month. Mm. And I believe that that what make me a man or to prove my manhood is the amount of girls I can have each night oh. and the amount of liquor that I drink. Mm. So I wasted so that's my life substance. You squandered everything. Right. I wasted so my substance. So you're earning a good amount of money. Right. But you squandered it. Squandered it. Every night I was at a rum bar and, and my friends were big men working at Alcat. And they were happy to be your friends, weren't they? They, they were happy to be my friends. I thought that they were my friends. Mm. And anything they drink, I drink because I want to prove as a 19 year old that, that I was belong a man, in this group. That I belong in that group. Yes. Right. And so I drifted further and further past. Mm. No church. Church was no a no no. Church was no, not even back the church, mm. right? Church was no and no, no. Because you weren't going back too often to back. No, no, Pastor. You, you hit the nail on the head. I wasn't going back too often, right? I would, I would go up and I'd drop a little thing and give my mother and I'd go on again. and mm. not even mm. spending two hours. Okay. i gone again. Mm. I have some girl somewhere waiting on me. I have some <laughs> liquor part. And girls, liquor, and dance hall. Mm -hmm. That's where I ended up, dance hall. Mm -hmm. Until I started keeping dance. Anywhere at dance parties, I started keeping right dance. Right. And what, what, that, made, what made the change to begin to bring you back to the Lord? All right. <laughs> uh, because you are the going The change on. started. All right, let, let, let me tell you something, Pastor. And that is why I tell people that God had his hand on me. And if I have to repeat myself like a scratch record, I will keep saying it all night. Mm -hmm. uh, it so happened that I met my present wife. God sent her into my life. Mm -hmm. I met my present wife back in 1987. Right, back in 1987. And... She actually I wonder changed. why you're saying your present wife. All right, my wife. Because, because my wife, my wife. Because the people may feel like you, you, you're no, a past wife. My wife, my wife, wife good. my wife, my <laughs> lovely wife. Uh, the, she made a, a, a transforming change mm -hmm. to my life. Was uh, she an Adventist at the time? No, no, no. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm coming to that part. She made a change to my life. Uh, she bring meaning to my life. And we continued together. I continued in the dance hall. Mm -hmm. In order for my dance to be successful, I have to visit other dances. So I was all over the place going to dance and promoting my dance. And I remember, I remember I used to go to, I'm showing you how the change takes place. I used to go to Claremont. I used to go to Claremont every Saturday mm -hmm. and buy beef. Okay. And I remember I came home. When I'm not buying beef, pasta, I buy a whole lot, like 10 oh. pounds. I remember I came home one Saturday with the, with the beef. And my wife said to me, that time she was girlfriend. Said that to time me, she was girlfriend, but you're living together? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, let's stop eating or something <laughs> For you see the blood coming out mm. on them someday. And from mm. that, I stopped eating beef. But that was God preparing me. And we, another change that took place. I remember uh, we had a dance in St. Anne's Bay at a place mm. named Basalan. One Thursday night. And we had to go down with the bus in the evening and come back with the bus in the morning. And when we came, we were in the living room counting the money. And she said, you know, we have to stop this thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Show you how my wife changed. She said, we have to stop this thing. It's not good yeah. for the children. We're growing, raising children. And the children see us going to dance. Yes. And that was the last so, dance. So you would have gone to dance the night you said on the bus. Mm -hmm. And you're coming back home the morning. On the bus. So whole night you're out. Yes, man. A regular and thing, where man. are the children this time? The children were at home with the helper. Okay. The children were at home so, with the So the good wife said, no man, this, right. we can't let the children Right. Yeah. And that was the last dance that I had. Okay. And so I stopped going to dance. So, so when, when you brought home 
the, the approximately 10 pounds of beef. And your wife said, we need to stop this. It's not good. Mm. That was the last time you bought, you went back to that place to buy that. That time, the last time I eat beef. Yes. You, you, last time you ate beef at all, your wife said, and the last time you ate it. Yes, ma'am. And now on a second occasion, your wife said, we need to stop that. And that was the last time you had, you last time. dealt with the dance. Yes, yes, yes. That's a powerful, um, yes, man. good but, wife. But the concern I had, Pastor, my wife grew up in a Sunday church. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Adventist church. Right. The children were coming. And I should let the viewers know that between my wife and I, we, had six, we have six children mm -hmm. and two grand. They're all grown adults. Yes. Uh, I'll come into that part of the blessing. But when we were coming up, my wife, before we were married, my wife said, look, why she can't go to Adventist church? No, my, my, my wife says it's time for us to give our life to God. Mm -hmm. All right. But then again, we said we're living shock up life. We can't go to church yes. and live shock up life. 1992, we got mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, we didn't have any fancy wedding. Mm -hmm. It was my wife, myself, two witnesses, and mm -hmm. the children. Okay. I don't even have a photograph. <laughs> I couldn't even afford a gown. We are rented a piece of thing. I don't know if it's a shawl or whatsoever. And she mm -hmm. put over her head and it dropped, dropped down her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And we went to a marriage officer mm -hmm. in Brownstone. My name is a Sims. Mm -hmm. And we married in his living room. Okay. And the high point of our marriage was that I was now working with UDC. And, and UDC had a hotel in Montego Bay named Sea Castle. And they gave me a weekend. At right. On the moon weekend. Ah, uh, right. The problem I had, or the concern I had, was that my wife said she cannot go to a Sunday church. It was Sabbath, Sabbath church. And I said I can't go to a Sunday church. But, because, because but it was a concern for me and mm -hmm. she. It was a concern for the children. The children. For they would be confused. Mm -hmm. Right. They, and and, and you, although you had left the church and you said you were far away, but those principles, you are still insisting on them now. The Sabbath and Pastor, that matter of righteousness. That's the reason why I want to reach out to mm. a parent tonight. Yes. We're saying that their child is too young. Mm -hmm. Plant the seed. Yes. Because even though I drifted, mm -hmm. I keep looking the back at the, the landmark. Yes, yes, yes. There was a landmark. Yes that I keep looking back to. And every drift I drift, there was a spirit that says, you're a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I go anywhere and see Seventh-day Adventists, I try to identify with them. Yes, yes. Because a seed was planted. Mm -hmm. So that child that you have that just says too young is not too young. Sow the seed. And so, <laughs> uh, Pastor, you want to know how, what bring me back in the church now. yes i used to i went through some rough times and then i got the job at udc which is another chapter i got a job at the udc and i there was a crusade in golden grove mm -hmm. i saw them pitching the tent and and at this time you were living in golden grove yes man okay yeah, I met my wife in, in Golden Grove. Mm -hmm. My wife is not from Golden Grove. Okay. My wife is from the hills of St. James. Mm -hmm. But oh. she ended up in Golden Grove. God brought her there for me. Yes, of course. God brought her there. Of course. So and when you were living together and got married and so on, that was all in Golden in Grove. Golden Grove. Golden Grove. Grove. Yes. Okay. And, and for the viewers, Golden Grove would be just about what uh, five miles from claremont or, yes or? no man about about, uh, about three miles, three miles from, from claremont right. uh about 19 kilometers from race. okay uh 15 minutes if you take the mm. toll all right i came home i used to do my farming mm -hmm. i love farming and i came home from my farm one saturday evening mm -hmm. kind of saturday that time but look at how god is working the meat was taken out. Mm -hmm. I stopped keep dance. And I realized now, Pastor, 
That when I go to my farm on a Saturday, I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. I feel luggy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I go on a Sunday morning, I move a mountain. You move it, yes. But I never know what was going on. And I came home from my farm one Saturday evening. Call it Saturday evening. And I saw some flyer. Mm -hmm. And my wife said that I had close association with, with Adventists then. Yes. I had the minots that live across from me. Mm -hmm. Right? I had Brother Simmons from Britainville mm -hmm. and the late George Francis. Okay. We also trim at the same barber in Claremont every Saturday night. We would, yeah. we, we, we would meet there. Mm -hmm. But we never talk about church, we talk about farming. Right. Right. I visited Seventh day Adventist Church. Right? I visited a church, a big church. And I didn't like the fellowship, for I went with, with my son, who is now 40 had, you know, long, and they didn't even have me a seat, and it was a crusade. Okay. Right. I went to Golden Grove Church. Mm -hmm. I visited, for I was now searching. Yes. I visited Claremont. And then I ended up at Eginton, and I told myself, I'm going to baptize at Eginton. Because the fellowship that I found at Eginton then, Mm -hmm. I never see that in any Adventist church. And the clapping and whatsoever, the church was just lively. And I remember somebody was sharing a hymnal with me. And Elder Black was around the back and Elder mm -hmm. Black walk up and come give me another hymnal. And I said, I have one already. I said, man, this is good. And so, when I came home, I saw the flyers and she said that the brethren from Britainville were passing through and she left them. They left them mm -hmm. here. My wife she was no wife. My wife started going to the crusade before mm -hmm. me. Okay. Wife and children would go every night. Mm -hmm. And from the first week, my wife came home one night. And she said, this tree not leaving me. And I said, I want to have me here and write. She because said, this what? This, this tree not leaving her? Right. And oh. this is the woman. Who was Pastor, saying she's not going to the church you're going? This is the woman who said that she could not go to a Sunday, mm. to a Sabbath church. And she said the tree not leaving and me. And that's just one week into the program. And I said to her, I never know what she was talking. In those days, crusade was keeping for five weeks. I says, what tree not run a golden grove? <laughs> she said, I'm getting, I'm getting baptized mm. at the end of, of the crusade. I still not start going to crusade it. I mm. used to drive a little Jesus or Gemini. And I stopped at a watering hole before I come to the crusade in the mm -hmm. night. So I just reach a crusade in time to pick them up and take them home. Mm -hmm. But one night, in the second week of the crusade, it was a Monday night, stop at a bar in, in Colgate. I stop at a bar in Colgate, a strip joint. And I left there nine o'clock, like I do every night. Because the pastor used to finish at 9.15. Mm -hmm. But that night when I reached here at 9.15, the pastor just ready to preach. Oh. And I sat in my car with one foot out and one foot in. And a half a bottle of Guinness in my hand. And when the pastor made the appeal, I remember the song that was being sung. Just as I am without one plea. I found myself, I don't know how I get up, Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what caused the get up, but I found myself get up and I was at the altar with tears running down my, my cheek. Mm -hmm. And from that night, I went to the altar in Golden Grove. I've not Amen. been back to a rum bar. Amen. I've not been back to a go-go club. I, 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 I have not left the church since that time. Amen. When the Bible workers Shame, came man. to me, when the Bible workers came to me, and said that they want to study. I told them no. I said, look, my mind is makeup. Look for some other people. And I remembered the night before my baptism, a Friday night. Mm -hmm. And this was, I wanted to instill the worship thing in my family. My wife wasn't used to all of that. And I got some brethren from Armandville and Claremont. And they came to the house, eight of them, I remember specifically. And they had family worship before we got Mm -hmm. baptized and that is how God brought me into the church Amen. and 
I remembered when I got baptized, the, the, the crusade did not use the regular mission story for a mission story mm -hmm. the following Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They asked me for my testimony. Okay. Because people know me, Would have been knew aware. me yes. as the devil's lieutenant. Mm -hmm. I've never committed murder. I've never injured a man. I've never taken crack cocaine. I was never a homosexual. But I was guilty of every other sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people knew that. Mm -hmm. And people traveled from near and far. The Sabbath evening when I was getting baptized. They gave me time that I soon leave the you church. soon leave, yes. Right. But I'm going 24 years. Amen. Praise right. God. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. And so, I believe, Pastor. And when I got baptized... And I gave my testimony. I made a pledge to God from the platform of that tent. Mm -hmm. I said where I'm coming from. I left a lot of people there. And I said, God, I'm going back for them. I said that publicly. Mm -hmm. And be before I got the right and a fellowship in any church, right? Mm -hmm. I was in a crusade with Winston Redway in a place called Earwoodall in saint mary mm -hmm. right not as a bible worker or anything but he carried me with him yes. for me to get the experience he mm -hmm. said to me boy boy me now make a go to church go get cool enough and he took me with him he met, before he was true livingston scott was going to do a program in clover hill i don't go to church yet, you know? mm -hmm. and scott you took, are baptized but you have been officially uh, scott took me from redway and took me to Clover Hill for five weeks. That's where I met Elder Daniels and, and mm -hmm. others. Right after Scott finished Clover Hill, he took me to Woodstock. And then Scott said to me after Woodstock, go to church, go learn, learn, learn now how church run. And mm -hmm. I went to church, Pastor Leroy Sewell was a pastor. And I remember my first sermon that I preached on a Sunday night. Uh, he had the salt of the hurt. Yes. Right. And that was my first sermon, Pastor Sewell was sitting there. The December, the December was uh, at Camp Verley. They had camp meet and, and lay preachers institute. And I was selected by the church to go. And when I went there, Elder Samuel Telemach was the speaker. Mm -hmm. And when I left Camp Verley, Pastor, and when I reach back to Spring Village, I want to start preach. When I come back to Saint and I want to start preach, I was motivated. Mm -hmm. I was baptized in May, and I did my first crusade before one year. Yes. I did my first crusade in March 2000. Baptized May 1999. Did my first crusade. They called me to Free Hill. They call, because when I went to Camp Verley, news spread far that the, the practicum, I, I was tapping the practicum even, okay. even above some seasoned lay, mm -hmm. lay, lay, lay preacher. I still have a cassette, but I don't have anything to play the cassette. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so you are, you are now beginning to do campaigns. You're, you're I now begin to do. All right. I, got, I start getting called to preach at churches mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and Sabbath. That my church in Golden Grove started to label me as traveling officer. Yeah, because there, you're, you're not there was a lot of criticism I get from my church, mm -hmm. right? But uh, even, even even before you move on from there, because our time is practically gone for part mm -hmm. one, because we're gonna have to look at the if the your campaign in a part two, but mm -hmm. certainly we have to bring in something in part one here, because you have done. Having known you, you have done multiple campaigns, mm -hmm. large ten campaigns. Mm -hmm. Um, in St. Anne, in Trelawney. Tell us some of the areas you have done campaigns. I know Pastor, you have been at 10 City Port More. Tell us some of the areas. Pastor, dear, the, uh, let, let me tell you. I've been from Burnsav in mm -hmm. St. Elizabeth mm -hmm. to Opel in Anova, mm -hmm. right? I have been to Gimme Bit in Clarendon. So that's three parishes gone. Right? If you want it parish by parish, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so Anova. St. Elizabeth, uh, I've never done any in Manchester. I, Trelawney. In, in Trelawney. Yes. St. Catherine. St. Catherine, St. Anne. 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 St. Mary was my feeding ground, mm -hmm. right? Uh, St. Uh, 
Kingston and St. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. So I've never done a campaign in St. Thomas. I've never done a campaign So in you have West gone Milan. half of the country? Right. Some of the parishes? Right. Uh, I was checking the other day, and I'm at about 69 crusades. 69 campaigns? Yeah, 69 tell campaigns. Me, tell us, uh, in terms of, I know, for example, that I've traveled with you to quite a few of these campaigns. I've gone there, and God has used you to point many, many souls to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, in those 69, mm -hmm. um, hundreds, thousands mm -hmm. of, of surrendered their lives to Jesus in baptism. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you plan to retire from preaching? <laughs> no retirement I, I, preacher. I'm asking you against the context that I know that Satan doesn't retire. That's why I'm asking. No you. retirement preacher. <laughs> no, no retirement. Uh, let me tell you something. My, my family know. Take my food from me. Mm -hmm. Take my job from me. Mm -hmm. But don't take the work of God from me. Don't interfere with, 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 with that. And even pastor, if I reach a stage that I, I'm not mobile, I mean, I, 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 I am incapacitated. Mm -hmm. Take me and put me on the street side with some trucks that I, as long as my hand can move. I just want to tell somebody about you. Pastor, God has been good to me. God has been good. And let I tell the pastor why one of the reasons why I know that God called me for this work. I was mm -hmm. called pastor. I'm not preaching. Pastor, when I started preaching, fellow lay preachers used to criticize me. Mm -hmm. That I am Ali Button because I go to some churches and not even a glass of water. Much less oh. a stipend to take. Okay, it's okay. no way I see people getting stipend to uh, travel. Uh, I travel the length and breadth of this nation at my own expense. Mm -hmm. I put money in crusades. Into campaigns, yes. Right. The, but one of the big points before you close that I know that God called me. Mm -hmm. God called my family yes. before he called me. Okay. If my wife... Because it was the same wife who had said she that, oh, she couldn't, she that stopped on the church. Pastor. She's the one who said, this train not leaving me. Before <laughs> I decide to get before baptized. Before I started to visit the campaign. Before I even start to visit the campaign, my wife made a decision. God mm. called my wife even more before she called me. Because God realized that if my family was not a part of my ministry, my mm. family would die. Yes. Right? The thing is, Pastor, for a wife to get up, a preaching for five weeks. Mm -hmm. And for five weeks, you have to iron two suits of clothes every morning. Mm -hmm. One for work, one mm -hmm. for cruising. Mm -hmm. When I leave home at 7.30, 7, 7.30, you're not seeing me back on the midnight. 12, midnight. midnight. Right? Mm -hmm. And that goes on for five weeks. It takes a woman. It goes on for five weeks for about four times in the year. Four Just times a year. Five weeks for one year. Five weeks about three, four times. Right, because I used to do four crusades. Mm -hmm. And in between that, I'm doing revival. revival and I want to use this opportunity. My wife is watching to say thank you. My, yes. my ministry could not be the success without my wife. And you better make sure you thank the children too, because they are watching too. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, 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 so let me put it collectively. I want to thank my family. Yes. David, Tash, Andre, all of you, Shane. I want to thank you, and I want to thank mostly my wife. Amen. Because, Pastor, it takes a woman who has a connection with God to put up with things like those. Yes. And so that's the reason why I tell, I tell people that I operate a, a, a family ministry. Mm -hmm. Right, but if it wasn't for my wife, my fa my ministry would not be. That is why when people are counting their blessings, they count it in dollars and cents. No, the You're wife that them. God bless me with yes. is a blessing. The Amen. children that come from that wife, those are my blessings. Amen. And ever since that time, Pastor, I have been preaching. I have been preaching. Sometime when I was younger. I used to do back-to-back -back crusades and all of that, you know. And some of the crusades that I can remember, I want to thank you that as I, when you were 
pastor for the Brownstone Circuit, mm -hmm. you entrusted a young green preacher yes. with a big tent yes, I remember. in the middle of Brownstone. Yes, man, I remember. And I remember my first baptism was four. And I was feeling downhearted. Mm -hmm. And we ended that campaign. We had to finish it in the church. Mm -hmm. And we baptized about 68. Amen. Right? Amen. Uh, so my journey as an evangelist, God still has his hand on me. And it hasn't been a rough road. I've hit rock bottom already. Mm -hmm. I know what it is to be in a state like Elijah. Yes. You're on the mountain top calling me. down fire one, one, <laughs> one, one day and the following day you find yourself in the valley mm -hmm. running from a Jezebel. Yes. And, but you are and when I found myself in my valley and sometimes in my life it sent me back to study the word of God mm -hmm. and I read in the book uh, Prophet and Kings where Ellen White said don't believe that because you are on a mountain today mm -hmm. you won't be in the valley tomorrow yes. but what i've proven is that the same god on the mountain yes. is the same god in my valley same god on the mountain same god in the that's valley right. we wish that's we didn't right. have the clothes here but why well, you know part two part two we're gonna have to have part two and evangelist burgess um on sunday night not tomorrow saturday night but sunday night um god permitting I myself will be launching out into the deep in Florida, um, Sunrise, Seven Avenues Church. That is off um, Oakland Park, Oakland Park Boulevard. And that's in the, so all of those churches in that vicinity there, Ambassador, Royal Palm, Plantation, um, Lauder Hill, and some other churches there, we're going to be at that church. So just search for Sunrise, Seven Avenues Church. That's, I think, west of, of um, 441. Sunrise and Avenue Church. We'll be there. So we start there this coming Sunday. And I start this coming Sunday. And you start this coming in Sunday Old Harbor. in Old Harbor. I will be near to the Bannister Com -com community. Bannister I'll be the community. Claremont. Claremont. I will be at one Claremont Drive. One Claremont Drive. Right. Just apart and from from Oma Plus Hardware. And that's a tent right there. That's a tent. The tent has been pitched. As I speak, the men are working night. What color tent? Do you want to identify it? Are you able to say? No, what color I tent can't is say it? what color okay. tent. It was pitched yesterday. Okay. And I was given a. But a, a big tent will be there and one. Massive tent. One. Repeat that address. One Claremont Drive. One Claremont Drive. Right. In, that's that's in that's in the Claremont area yes. near the Bannister. Right, that's about if you are walking from the clock in you know, in Olava, that's about ten minutes walk. Ten minutes walk. So uh, that's in in Olava there. Um, our program in Sunrise, Florida, begins at six fifteen. That is Florida. That is six fifteen Jamaica time. It oh. is seven fifteen Florida time. Mine is seven fifteen Jamaica 7 15 time. Seven fifteen Jamaica time. J J Jamaica but, time. But seven fifteen. Other time. So for those who are on, on NJC Online Church, we are starting at 6.15 and closing at 8. So 7.15 to 9 in Florida, 6.15 to 8 at NJC Online Church in Jamaica. Make sure you join us for these two programs. And who is the pastor of that, that era there? Pastor um, Franklin Brown. Pastor Franklin, Franklin Brown. Brown. Who, 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 is, who is a son of, of St. Anne? He's from Saint Saint of course, but of course. Yes, of he's course. from Jamaica Saint conference. Yes, ma yes, yes. Thank yes. you so much, Ella, Ella Livingston Burgess. Uh, we wish we could go for the whole night, but we haven't touched all the miracles of the campaigns as yet. Oh, Pastor, we I have some testimony. Miracles in your life, so that's part two. I have some testimonies, Pastor. That, I know, you know some of them. Uh, some testimonies. I've been to some of the campaigns. Yeah. We have been on the trail with convoy driving to and fro. Yes, Pastor. That night in Ten City when the road was black. <laughs> when the road was black. we have to through the cane. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> the people need to hear all of these testimonies yeah. and the great power of God. So we're going to arrange a, a part two. Yeah, I, I, I need soon. to share some testimonies. Yes, uh, some yes. Testimonies, yeah. We share some testimonies in part two. That will be yeah. coming up hopefully within the space of four weeks. Well, you are in campaign yeah. now. Yeah. So within the space of about five, six weeks, we should be having part two. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you join us but, for that. But then again, I just want to use 15 seconds again to say publicly unto the world, thanks to my family, thanks to my wife, I could not have done it without you, Paula. 
I could not have done it without you. I want to say thanks and may God continue to bless you and the children. May God continue to let his face shine upon you. I love my family. Yes, yes. the wife who made those positive impact when you brought home the approximately 10 pounds of beef and she said we can't continue. You stop right away eating beef that time. Then the same wife you you went out to the dance, both of you, and came back the next morning and said, we can't come to this for the children. You stopped right away. And now the same wife went to campaign and said, this train not leaving me. And That's both right. of you, praise God. Praise God. Both God. of you in the family yes, in the train. Yes, it's yes, a yes. good time on which to close. Thank you so much for joining us on Journey of Faith. Remember, NJC Online Church is constantly carrying programs. We're going to be with you tomorrow. God predict for the day. On Sunday night, running for two weeks. We'll be carrying that program coming out of Sunrise, Seventh Avenue Church, starting at 6.15 Jamaica time, 7.15 Florida time. That will be for two weeks. And then we're going to pick up the, the Alexandra campaign with Elder Tapper, uh, Damian Tapper, right after that. So four weeks of campaign right here at NJC Online Church. Thanks for joining us. Elder Livingston Burgess will close in prayer for us right now. Loving Father, word in heaven, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, God, for the opportunity that has been afforded us that we can share our testimony. Lord, tonight, whatsoever I said, it's not about me, but it's about giving glory to you, God, for you have been good. And tonight, Father, it's also about reaching somebody out there with my testimony. Amen. And so, I, God, I pray tonight that somebody would have been touched. Somebody would have been encouraged tonight to go on. Somebody tonight, God, who would have been considering giving up will say that if, if God was good to him, he will be good to me also. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Oh Lord, many great testimonies have been shared on this platform. So I do ask that you'll continue to bless this platform. That it will be used, God, as your mouthpiece. Continue to be with us. Help us now that God, for the remaining Sabbath hours, that we will worship you. We will magnify you. And we will get your Sabbath day blessing. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Ella Burgess, Livingston Burgess. Thank you so much, people of God. Thanks for joining us again. Happy Sabbath. God bless you. Thank you so much. I had a lot of requests to repeat this song again tonight, and I appreciate that. It's one of the most important songs that we have ever done. It's touched my life in so many ways. And I hope that you're as grateful tonight as I am that he chose willingly to trade his life for mine. His heart was broken, mine was mended. He carried bore my burden The nails that held him set me free His life for mine His life for Brought me here.